Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is back with more brilliant political insight. This time it comes to us from a rant that she posted on her Instagram story about why we have to abolish the Electoral College. That is right, ladies and gentlemen. An elected official posted on her Instagram story about why we need to, like, abolish the Electoral College. And, you know, we'll go over why that's stupid, why she is stupid, and most importantly, where she's actually getting her information from, which in my opinion is the most unsettling. So do stay tuned. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off, Kami. So, obviously, we'd expect Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez to call for the abolition of the Electoral College because it's one of the trendy positions to have amongst the radical and increasingly mainstream left. And because of that, I initially just sort of like rolled my eyes at it, but then I actually looked at where she was getting this information from um, because she's basically, she posted a screenshot of an article on her Instagram story and then she adds her own little incoherent thoughts to an already incoherent article. And I'm not saying that to insult her, I'm really not. Everything that she wrote is like literally illogical, which follows suit well because the article is almost the same way. And we'll go through those arguments about abolishing the Electoral College, but first let me show you um, where she got this from. So it's an article published by New York Magazine entitled, Here's Every Defense of the Electoral College and Why They're All Wrong. And it's written by a man named Eric Levitz. And so I looked into him a bit just to get an idea of the type of person that's influencing our politicians. And he's made statements like, white nationalist terrorism is a problem, but Donald Trump is a bigger problem. Donald Trump and Tucker Carlson are not white nationalists because they are worse than that. Uh, Donald Trump has done more damage to this country than any mass shooter could with an AK-47. The Second Amendment is a threat to our personal liberties. I think that one actually might be my personal favorite just because it sounds like the title of a satirical article but the point here is that this is the type of person who's feeding Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez all of her idiotic ideas and that should startle you because now we're starting to see the tip of the iceberg with a generation of incoming politicians who've been miserably failed by our education system so they read an article from someone they're like oh I like that's nice I like that. That's a good idea. And so, you know, remember, she went to Boston University, one of the best schools in the country. She gets a four-year degree in economics, and now she's one of the least informed people in all of Washington. And I mean that. I don't think I've ever said that Nancy Pelosi or Elizabeth Warren, people like that, I've never actually said that they're stupid because I don't believe that. But I truly believe that Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is incapable of logical thought. And every time I hear her speak, I'm reminded of every debate or argument or even conversation I've ever had with young liberal women. They're all just like her. And some are actually even more rational, but it's all about the same. And so with her Instagram story, she makes the argument against the Electoral College because, well, the Founding Fathers brought the Three-Fifths Compromise. They denied women the right to vote and actually denied rights to pretty much everyone. What kind of statement is that? What kind of statement is that from an elected official? Um, the Founding Fathers, they like actually denied rights to pretty much everyone. She has like a 14 year old girl who's like ill-equipped for a class presentation with actually that like basically summarizes her entire career. So she goes on to say, oh, well, we don't let people in Puerto Rico vote. We don't let felons vote, etc." And so what she's really advocating for is a democracy, which isn't what we have. We're a constitutional republic that was by design. We aren't a democracy. This was not a mistake. The Founding Fathers had these debates. They were brilliant, well-read people, incomprehensibly intelligent people. And so Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez wants to stand on their shoulders and spit down at them as if she knows better than they, which is not likely. She's 29 years old. In 1776, Madison was 25. Monroe was 18. Hamilton was 19. I mean, she's a pathetic excuse for an elected official, and if she had any respect for the institutions of this country, she would resign. She's trying to make the argument here that the Founding Fathers had ideas that were not good, therefore we ought to reject them as an authority, and therefore none of their ideas ought to be listened to. This is illogical because she's falling into the fallacy of, this person did this, therefore everything they do is bad. Not true. I can claim that 2 plus 2 is 4 and also that 2 plus 3 is 6, and the logical way to go about it would be to argue in favor of or against each claim instead of saying something like, well, John Doyle thinks 2 plus 3 is 6, you're really gonna listen to what he says? Yeah. Because me being wrong about one thing doesn't mean that I'm wrong about everything, and it's your job to prove that. But with the article that she cites, and I read through it, uh, and it basically starts off by giving an infantile and scattered summary of human history and concludes by saying, well, the only reason that the GOP is concerned with the Electoral College is because it's beneficial to them politically. And this is partially true. The biggest reason, for me at least, you know, I won't claim to speak for all conservatives, but uh, it's that it's the constitutional way as decided by our founding fathers who were brilliant men and out of respect for them and everything that they did to build this country, which is the greatest country in the history of the world, it should be preserved. And that reason encompasses all of the arguments in favor of the Electoral College because those were the arguments that compelled the founders to settle on the Electoral College in the first place. So the founding fathers settling on the Electoral College is basically predicated on all arguments that outline that the Electoral College is a good idea. 
The other part of me, which I'd say is somewhere between like five and nine percent, maybe somewhere around there, uh, that's the part of me that wants to keep the electoral college because I think it benefits me politically. Like, I'll be honest about it because I have integrity, but apparently the left won't when we ask, hey, why is it that, you know, they begin to complain about uh, the electoral college now? Could it be because their 2016 candidate lost the election but won the popular vote by about three million votes? And the only reason that they care about the popular vote replacing the electoral college is because it benefits them politically. That's it. And so this guy basically tries to list all the arguments in favor of the electoral college and then debunk them with facts and logic, epic style. And so his first argument is that the electoral college currently exists, therefore it's good. And so right off the bat, we have a straw man because that's not the argument. The argument is that the electoral college is good because X, Y, Z, not just because it exists. If the electoral college didn't exist, people would still be arguing in favor of it. Income tax now exists, people are arguing against that. Whether or not it's currently implicated is irrelevant. We're arguing the merits of the system, and this guy's sneaky because when we argue the merits of it, we're quite often reciting the same arguments that the Founding Fathers made, and so he can then strawman that by saying, well, oh, they're saying the Founding Fathers set it up this way, which is basically saying that it exists, therefore it should continue to exist, and that's not what we're saying at all. This should be obvious, but it's not, apparently, and people like AOC are just reading this and just like, oh, I like this. I should allow this to influence my public policy because it's like, she's just got this ability this right in her head it's just so empty and so anything that gets in there just stays there just like absorbs in there so she reads some simple-minded assessment of the electoral college she goes hmm yes and so now it's just she's just in congress now fighting for that it's just unbelievable and we have to be being pranked right now and so he goes on in the article he's talking about, oh, the Founding Fathers also brought us the three-fifths compromise. He literally uses the word dudes to describe them. And he points out that a majority of people are in favor of a popular democracy and that our Founding Fathers uh, were not. And would you like to know what the greatest argument against democracy is? A five-minute conversation with the average voter. That's a quote from Churchill. And it's absolutely true. This is something that makes me very uncomfortable, talking to people about politics as often as I do and realizing that this person's vote is equal to mine. And that would be even worse than a popular democracy because people are stupid. What's the quote, uh, the Carlin quote? Like, you know, think of how stupid the average person is and then realize that half of them are dumber than that. The founders knew this, Socrates knew this, Aristotle knew this. He said that he was against democracy because he thought that it would be subject to abuse by demagogues who would try to sway the unintelligent people. Ask yourself, is this true? Are we seeing this now? Are we seeing demagogues attempt to sway unintelligent voters with unrealistic promises of free college, free health care, all that good stuff? Now, imagine if it were a popular democracy. It's literally devolving into like an elementary school where, you know, the elections were just kids promising, oh, more recess time, more pizza days. And as far as most people being in support of a popular democracy, maybe. But most people I've talked to about this, both left and right, actually agree with the idea that it's dangerous to allow everybody's vote to count equally. The problem is, who decides who votes? Who decides whose vote should count? You know, I don't know. I'm not there yet. How about you have to be a net tax contributor and you have to pass an eighth grade civics test? How about that? Is that fair? Why should people who impose a net fiscal burden on the country be able to decide policy pertaining to increasing or decreasing their benefits? Why should people who aren't contributing in taxes get to decide where the tax money is allocated to? And you know, you can see how this comes full circle for the left because they're advocating for more and more third world immigration, more and more importation of low skill workers, a majority of whom go on welfare benefits. And now, oh yeah, let's let them vote. Oh, what's that? They're concentrating in states that already vote for us? Oh, let's just make it a popular vote so we never lose an election again. It's like they're literally selling our country for political power and they're using your money to do it. So his second reason is effortlessly written. You know, he's taken it upon himself to write this thorough refutation of the arguments in favor of the Electoral College for New York Magazine. And then one of his reasons isn't actually reason. It's just a caricature of what he perceives those who defend the Electoral College to argue, which coincidentally favors his ideology. And so when he actually breaks it down, he says, oh, people want to keep the Electoral College because it gives a disproportionate amount of political power to white people. And this isn't true. I've never heard any serious person actually make this argument. Apparently, it was the former governor of Maine who made this argument but they had to like dig it up to find it from some radio interview. And so I think this is a dumb argument. I think most people would agree. And that's why he's bringing it up here in the first place, because he wants the arguments in favor of keeping the Electoral College to appear dumb. But he then goes on immediately after to say, well, another argument that's made in favor of keeping the Electoral College is that um, uh, to abolish it would give too much political power to white people, since white people are the majority in this country. And so we're trying to avoid tyranny of the majority here. That's the whole point. So if you look at the actual data of how the system benefits different demographics, White people only have a slight edge. 
very slight edge over other demographics. And then he highlights the edge that people living in non-metropolitan areas have because of the electoral college. It's a big thing. And then he jumps and says, and most of these people are white. So look at how big of an advantage white people have. Boo, white people. But it's like, we don't have to rely on your speculation because in the data that you provided, we can already see the edge given to white voters by the system. And it's not significant. And so this is just more identity politics in the first place. So it's like, you know, it's not important. We treat people like individuals in this country. We protect individual rights with systems like the Electoral College. It's the classic idea they have of the ends justify the means if it's for the good of the society. This idea that's caused some of the greatest human rights violations in the history of the world. It's a very dangerous idea. And that's why we protect individual rights. But he goes on to say, oh, well, people say a popular vote would give large states too much power. Hmm, that's a long-winded way of saying that you don't believe in democracy. And it's like... What? You do believe in democracy? You idiot. Haven't you read any book ever? Their thoughts are so heavily reliant on things that sound like warm and cozy. Like, I feel like every time I'm interacting with these people, it's like I'm confessing to a child that Santa Claus doesn't exist. They're like whimpering like, but, but what about our democracy? He's like, what democracy? Where is it? It never existed. Who told you we have a democracy? Like, Elizabeth Warren. It's like, and you believed her? It's like, well, so you're saying we're not all equal? Yeah. Whoever told you that you were equal to anyone else, they lied to you. You're not equal to me. You're not equal to yourself. Everyone is different. We're equal in the sense that we're all human beings and therefore we're entitled to the protections of our God-given rights. But we are not equal in any other sense. Everybody knows that. You even know that. Sit down with a pen and paper and just reason something out for yourself for once. Please, like, take five minutes. Take five minutes and just think, hmm, well, I guess I'm smarter than some people, but some people are smarter than me. But I have noticed that I work a bit harder than those people. So, hmm, this is all quite intricate. Yes, exactly. That's why we protect the rights of the individual. People are like, oh, well, women's rights, trans rights. What are you even talking about? Individual rights. That's the whole point. Anything else is immoral. And his other arguments, they still don't even address the fundamental reasons that we have the Electoral College. He finishes up with more straw man arguments in favor of the Electoral College that I've literally never heard prior to reading this article. He's like, oh, well, you know, they say candidates wouldn't pay attention to rural states. It would create a system through which unqualified people could win the presidency. Who even says those things? How about this one? The Electoral College is a safeguard against uninformed or uneducated voters. It restrains the inherent failures of democracy, which likes to implode on itself like a collapsing star. It helps people living in South Dakota prevent people living in New York from deciding how they should live their lives. It decentralizes the process of electing a president so that everyone's vote matters. We've got about 4 million square miles of land in this country. You're telling me that people who live in the blue area should decide how everyone in the red lives too? It's absurd. That's why we deconcentrate the power by having state elections for the Electoral College. Hey guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave it a comment, and of course, subscribe to the channel because we're about to break 100,000 and big plans are coming at 100,000. I'm thinking about doing a giveaway. Like what if I gave away some of these laptops and I put like the stickers on them like I've got? That'd be kind of cool. I don't know. We might do something like that. Uh, like, you know, you have to, like, you know, share the channel with, like, X amount of people. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter! And uh, something like that. I don't know. Still toying around with it. But thank you so much for watching. I mean, God bless America.